Hello and welcome back. So today I want to continue talking about transmission lines and in particular look at the case when you have more than one piece of transmission line but the two pieces have different characteristic impedances. Basically what I want to do today is look at how you can perform lossy impedance matching using resistors. So if you're curious then keep watching. So let's start things off with an experiment. So what I got here is two cables of different characteristic impedance, one 75 ohms and the other 50 ohms. Now I've interconnected the two cables and I have a signal coming from the signal generator passing through the first channel of the oscilloscope, going through all the cabling and then finishing off at the second channel of the oscilloscope where I also have a termination resistor. Now, as you can see, the signal doesn't look very square. I mean, we can see some reflections here and there, but regardless, this is not how the signal is supposed to look like. Granted, there's only a, a small mismatch between the cables, but we can still see it. And the thing is, you don't want your signal looking like this at the end of the cable. I mean, it's still a usable signal, you can still see its frequency, it still has a rise and a fall time, but all these reflections can end up causing emission problems or other sort of issues. And especially if the signal would be at a higher frequency, the problems would be even greater. Now, simply interconnecting two cables and adding a termination at the end doesn't solve it. I mean, I tried all the variations possible. So here on the left side is what the signal is supposed to look like. So what it looks like when you have a 50 ohm termination with a 50 ohm cable or a 75 ohm termination with a 75 ohm cable. And then these other two pictures, the first row has a 50 ohm termination and then I have the 50 ohm cable connected to the 75 ohm cable. And on the other side I've swapped them and the same goes for below. So the 75 ohm termination and the two combinations for the cables. And in either case, does the signal look like it's supposed to look? So today I want to look at how to fix this issue, how to get the cables to transmit the signal without any sort of issues. And to do that, of course, we will turn to the simulator, LT Spice. So what I have here is a simulation with one of the test cases. Here the signal is going into the 50 ohm cable, from there to a 75 ohm cable, and finally into a 50 ohm termination resistor. And if we look at simulation results from this, well, it's not pretty. I mean, it doesn't look exactly like what we've measured, but that's also because of my oscilloscope's bandwidth limitation. But we can see that we have all sorts of reflections, both in the measurement and in the simulation. So we have all these ups and downs, which are not supposed to be there. The signal should look as clean as it is at the beginning. So the main problem we're getting is that the signal is traveling from one impedance region to a different impedance region. So here we have two impedance mismatches. We have the signal going from 50 ohms to 75 ohms between the two cables, and then we go from 75 ohms to 50 ohms between the cable and the termination. So the first step would be to correct the termination value. Go from 50 ohms to 75 so that it matches the cable from which the signal came from. So something like this. And if we look at this signal, we see that it's slightly better. So if we compare our original signal to the one where the termination is correctly placed, we see that we have far fewer of these reflections. And we also saw this in our measurement. So when we had the 50 ohm to 75 ohm cable connection, when the termination had the same value as the second cable, the signal looked slightly better than the time when the termination was also of the wrong value. So now the next step is to somehow correct the impedance of the cable. And one of the ways to understand how this can be done is if we accept that we can model the cable that has the correct value of termination as a simple resistor. So basically the 75 ohm cable with its 75 ohm resistor termination will have no reflections and thus it will behave like an infinite length of 75 ohm cable 
but it will also behave like a simple 75 ohm resistor. So if we simulate a 50 ohm cable going into a 75 ohm resistor and we compare our cable and only the resistor, the result is exactly the same. So we have the same reflections going on, it's just that we lack the time delay. So we no longer have the 20 nanoseconds of time delay that the cable was adding, we have the signal on the resistor just like it would be at the end of the first situation. So now the problem becomes much easier. How do you turn a 75 ohm resistor into a 50 ohm resistor? Well, you add another resistor. When you have two resistors in parallel, their equivalent resistance can be calculated and it will always be smaller than any of the individual resistors. Basically, if you add an 150 ohm resistor in parallel to a 75 ohm resistor, the equivalent value of the two will be 50 ohms. And if we try this out, and we look at the signal on the two parallel resistors, well, it looks exactly like the signal that we started off with. No more reflections, no more problems. And basically, we can now take our extra 150 ohm resistor and put it onto our initial system. So here I have the two transmission lines, the 75 ohms termination at the end, and this extra 150 ohm resistor in the middle. And if we simulate this, and we look at the end of the signal line, we see the undistorted signal. We have our initial signal, and the signal at the end is 40 nanoseconds further, basically because of the time delay of the two cables. So the point is that one of the ways to make an impedance matching is to add an extra resistor, either in parallel or in series, so that the equivalent resistance of the second cable matches the one of the first cable. If you go from a low impedance to a higher impedance, you need to add an extra parallel resistor. If we go from a higher impedance to a lower one, we need to add a series resistance. In both cases, the signal at the end will look unaffected and we will have no more reflections. But we notice one problem. With our second case, with the series resistance, the signal is smaller. And basically the problem is that we created a resistor divider. So we had our 25 ohm resistors in series with the 50 ohms. Now the reason why impedance matching with resistors is called lossy impedance matching is because you have losses. With the series resistance you have voltage losses and with the parallel resistance you only have current losses but in both cases you have a certain amount of power being dissipated on these matching resistors. Now before moving on let's just see if this actually works in real life. So here I have my signal going into the 50 ohm cable, from there it connects to the 75 ohm cable, terminates in a 75 ohm termination, and we have our distortion. So this is not the way the signal is supposed to look like. But I also prepared this little board that simply interconnects the two signals and just adds an 150 ohm resistor in parallel with them. So now if I swap out my interconnection, and add the resistor. Well, the signals look perfect now. No more distortion, no more reflections, no more drama. Now, there's one more important thing to mention about this sort of impedance matching, and that is what happens if we swap around the signal generator and the termination. So, until now we analyze the case in which you have a generator and you have a receiver and signal travels only one way. What happens if signal needs to travel both ways? So you have two transceivers which are intercommunicating. Well if we take this sort of matching, so I put the termination resistor of the correct value on the cable, and if we look at this, well with our parallel resistor the signal is distorted again, and with our series resistance on the right side, yeah, again we get our distortions back. Problem being that we now go from a 75 ohm region to something that's even lower than 50 and on the other side we go from 50 to an 100 ohm region. So again we have an impedance mismatch. And the solution to this problem is a system that involves both a series resistor and a parallel resistor. With the mention that the parallel resistor needs to be in parallel with the line with the smallest impedance, and the series resistor needs to be in series with the line with the highest impedance. Now, 
To work out the exact value of these two resistors, there are a couple of formulas. They're a bit complicated, so I don't want to go into too many details. Point being that the same principle needs to be applied as before. When the signal goes from one side, the equivalent resistance of the other side needs to be equal to the value of the initial signal line. And when the signal goes the other way, again, the equivalent resistance of the system needs to be equal to the impedance of the first signal line. So if we want to apply this method for our 50 ohm and 75 ohm cables, the solution is going to look something like this. We will need a series 43.3 ohm resistor and the parallel 86.6 ohm resistor. They're not very common values, are they? But if we try this out, we have our input signal, the output in the first case is completely undistorted, and the output in the second case is again undistorted. So we have no more reflections, no more issue. Let's try this out, see if it actually works. So, got the same setup as before, signal going from the 50 ohm line into the 75 ohm into a termination, and now I prepared the same board, I just swapped out the resistors, I added the 86.6 ohm resistor and the 43.3. So now if you try adding this thing in, so 50 ohm goes into 50 ohms, and we finish connecting things, everything looks perfectly fine. So now when the signal goes from the 50 ohm into the 75 ohm cable, it looks perfectly okay. Now let's swap the things around, see if they behave the same way. So first of all, 50 ohm termination. Now I also have to put the signal into the 75 ohm line. And again, the signals are looking unaffected. We see the more severe attenuation, but the signal still looks fine. Now, by performing this sort of impedance matching, you will get unaffected signals without any reflections, but you will always get a certain signal attenuation. And if the impedance mismatch is small enough, then the attenuation is small enough and this might be acceptable. But there are cases where the impedance mismatch is very, very big, so this method will not really work. In those cases, you have a form of lossless impedance matching. But that is a topic for a different time. For now, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.